The NES or Nintendo Entertainment System is a console that took gaming into the 8-bit era. The third generation of consoles rising up from the video game crash of 83. For many mid-80s and early 90s kids, gaming was the Nintendo. And with over 700 games released, there sure is variety. But it won't come to you as a surprise that the million sellers are what most kids played and remembered. I myself was lucky to have access to a hand-me-down NES with over 40 games and have also been collecting for the system the past 10 years at flea markets, conventions, feeding the retro bubble. So my top 10 will include some new favorites and the mandatory nostalgic guilty pleasures. Be sure to subscribe to the channel for more toy and retro game related videos. And now it's time to blow in that Nintendo cartridge and pop in number 10. Kicking things off in the 10th spot is not just a nostalgic game, but also a game that seems to slip itself into every game night I've ever done. And it's a sports game, World Cup. This game sure isn't like the newer soccer games. It's got a couple teams, some settings to determine, tactics, but in the end, all you need is a buddy to play along and tackle everyone on screen. Even though it's often a bit glitchy, the characters' faces easily make up for that when they get tackled, and as you can see, they do resemble some of that River City Ransom character design. And yeah, there's not really that many rules. You can just grab the ball and run into the opposite team's goal. It's always a fun 40 minutes when I pop in this game with a friend. On to the next one. In the number 9 spot, we have the best vertical shooter on the system, and it takes you back all the way to the Wild West. Capcom's Gunsmoke. In this arcade game, you play as Billy Bob, a bounty hunter who shoots his way past all sorts of villainous henchmen. But you also have to collect the wanted poster for these henchmen in every level in order to complete it. The automatic scrolling ensures you action at all times, and with each try, you'll get better and better at this game. Because that's what the NES was all about, not just getting everything handed out where you needed to go, what you needed to do, but trial and error and lots of game overs. In the number 8 spot we have a game based on the short-lived cartoon and toy line of Bucky O'Hare. Now I started out as a game collector and didn't know much about the Bucky O'Hare toys yet. All I knew was that Bucky O'Hare on the NES was an uncommon game. So when I got it, I needed to try it out. And boy, it did not disappoint. It blew me away. The cutscenes, the platforming, the music, everything about this game was good. You start out as Bucky and in the following levels, you have to rescue your crewmates. Once they're rescued, you can switch between the characters so you can pick from any of the crew members that can help you progress through the level in the best way. So there's definitely some replayability with number 8. And the number 7 spot goes out to my favorite Disney afternoon cartoon, Chippendale 2. The NES didn't just get one, but two games, and it's the second one that ended up in my hands as a kid. I was so into the cartoon, so I just kept playing to see which characters would make an appearance. You can even play two-player, throwing or hiding in boxes. There's boss fights, and there's some surprising ways to progress through the levels. This one is definitely nostalgia talking, but I must have invested so much time into playing this game, it's just become a favorite. And it's a very good co-op game, so it definitely needs to be on this list. Number 6. Now they say don't judge a book by its cover, but back in the day, that's all you could do with games. You didn't have the internet to look up if any of these games were good, all you had was the box art. And based on some of the pictures on the back, you could kind of determine, okay, this game looks kind of like, like, like this sort of gameplay, but you never knew until you popped it in your Nintendo. Power Blade. This one, however, came to my attention whilst flipping through games at a reseller's booth, and the cover just looked so cool, so I decided to pick it up. 
Took it home, stuck it in the NES, didn't work, blew on it, and bam, gorgeous NES 8-bit graphics. You're a buffed up guy platforming your way through the levels as you power up your boomerang. And it was at that moment I was hooked on trying out any NES game I could get my hands on because there's so many hidden gems on this system. Well, he had to make an appearance somewhere on this list. It's the Blue Bomber, Rockman. Mega Man is in the number five spot, and it's one of the games I think everybody played. Mega Man 2. They really knew what they were doing in the second installment. The game was NES hard, but forgiving at the same time. When you finally knew what to do, you could easily find your way through the final boss. Yeah, Mega Man has to fight Dr. Wily, and he can only get to him when he defeats all of the bosses. Each boss possesses an extra power, which you can add to your own arsenal of moves once you've defeated that boss. The game then turns into a paper, rock, scissors type of tactic where you have to carefully plan out which boss you'll try to defeat first in order to have a better chance in the next world. It also means you can replay the game in many different orders. It's a classic. Number 4. So Konami took us all the way back to the Wild West with Gunsmoke, but for the number 4 spot they brought us into a classic horror film. Castlevania. You play as Simon Belmont who sets out to defeat Dracula in his own castle, which is of course packed with all sorts of monsters, but you have your trusted whip and magic upgrades to help you progress. And if you want a bite to eat, just break a wall and you'll find a hot meal stowed away somewhere. This game is always fun to pop in and play through. It controls really well apart from the involuntary back jump whenever you get hit. But it's just part of the difficulty, I guess. When they made the game, they set out to create a cinematic horror experience, and they really did. So cool that every single one of these little cartridges just opens up a whole new world in which you can really live out that fantasy. Now we've come to the top three of the list, and I always like to ask my viewers what their view is on this topic. What are your top three NES games? Because for everybody, this is gonna be a different list. You can even leave five in the comments below if you want to, and be sure to like the video. Now in my number three spot, we're going on an adventure, Kirby's Adventure. Probably the best game in the series and an easier one on this list. I remember trying out this game as a kid and I just kept playing it. Kirby is this balloon type of being that can suck up air and fly or shoot out projectiles or even take over the abilities of whichever enemy you encounter and suck up. And there's a lot of enemies. The overworld that you play in opens up even more with each level that you complete. There's mini games, there's trophy rooms, where you can just go and get a specific ability. It's a really well-made game. It's definitely easy to pick up and play and not get frustrated. Number two, well, it wouldn't be a Nintendo list without Mario making an appearance, am I right? As Mario Mania was sweeping the nation, they popped the cherry on top with Super Mario Brothers 3. They couldn't do better than Super Mario Bros. 1 and 2, but they did with this masterpiece. Nintendo went above and beyond to promote it. When a movie called The Wizard was released in theaters, it was just a big Nintendo commercial, and you could see gameplay for Mario 3. The game brings back what we knew from the first game, but added new power-ups like the Tanuki suits, frog suits, and an overworld map so you could pick your own adventure as you defeat all of the Koopas to save the princess from Bowser once again. They really have to explain more about this classic. It's a million seller. Everybody's, everybody has played this, and if you haven't already played it, definitely go and play it right now. Now before we head into the number one spot, there's some honorable mentions like the first Zelda game, which I really like. You also have the first Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game. Um, and then there is one game that I definitely want to talk about. Duck Hunt. Duck Hunt. 
Duck Hunt is a true NES classic, a black box launch title that probably every kid had that owned an NES with a zapper. You got an NES zapper gun that can shoot at the screen in order to hunt down some ducks. It was simple but fascinated you so much as a kid. And as an adult, when you hook up that CRT TV in order to make the zapper work, it's still fun. For the number one spot, I told you about that box of games I had growing up, and there was one game that was right up my alley. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, the arcade game. Having played the game in arcades, it was cool to see it on the home console. The first game had its cool parts, but Turtles is something that needed to be a beat-em-up. As you destroy foot soldier after foot soldier and a whole array of villains, you had toys of and saw in the cartoon. You of course had to save April from Shredder, but you can choose from any of the four Turtles. As a Turtle fanboy, this game was pure perfection. Turtles got really lucky, I think, with the game developers that stayed so true to the source material. It was like watching the cartoon, but you were playing the cartoon. It's such a fun game to keep playing. You can even play it with a buddy. So there's definitely nostalgia putting this one in the first spot, but it's definitely got to be a top 10 game for many gamers out there. So there you have it. That's my top 10 NES games. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to see more, definitely subscribe to the channel. And if you want to do more, you can always support me on Patreon. I put out weekly retro toy related videos. So you're going to have something to come back to every week. I hope to see you in the next video and I'll see you later guys. Bye.